Once a manufacturing giant, its future now teeters on the edge of collapse. Over the last five years, birth rates have plummeted by nearly 50%, gutting the workforce that once powered its economy. What was once seen as a temporary demographic hurdle has spiraled into a full-blown crisis. The generation that was supposed to replace the aging population never arrived, and now the world's second largest economy faces the impossible task of sustaining itself. The question is no longer if China will fall, but when the end will come. Let's turn to Peter Zihan, who lays out this troubling reality with hard-hitting precision. The situation in China has gone from bad to horrific. Uh, the new demographic data that's been leaking out in bits and pieces over the last nine months basically indicates that the replacement generation that the Chinese thought they were going to get back in 2000 never materialized. And now we're in a situation where the birth rates actually dropped by almost 50% in just the last five years. So the capacity of China long term, not simply to be a manufacturing power with workforce, but simply exist as a coherent industrial power is now impossible. And it's just a question now of how do we get from here to the end? Obviously, the Chinese government would prefer that end date to be as far in the future as possible. The challenge they're facing, the challenge we're all facing, is that the American birth rate, as low as it is, has now been higher than China's for 30 years. And so they've simply run out of people under age 40. So the only way that the Chinese have found that they can remain any degree of international competitiveness is to force their people to work long hours, subsidize the crap out of all the industries. And since the people are working all the time, push down their consumption and force their capital into government-led investments in some way. Well, that leaves you with this huge overhang of industrial product that has to be exported. As the situation in China worsens, it's not just their demographic collapse that poses a threat. What comes next will shake the global trade landscape. The economic challenges they face have pushed them into a desperate strategy, one that's already making waves across industries, particularly in the electric vehicle sector. But this is just the beginning of something much bigger. And so we're at the beginning edge of what will be the last great wave of Chinese product dumping. It's captured everyone's imagination in the electric vehicle space, and that's very, very real. But that's only one small sliver of what's coming. And unlike previous times when some version of this has happened with one country or another, this time the Americans, the Japanese, and the Europeans are not all not only ready, uh, they're prepared to put into place trade practices that will smash as much of that incoming product as possible. So we're standing today at the beginning of the greatest trade conflict we have seen since the 1920s. As we transition from analyzing Russia's position to examining China's economic challenges, it's essential to shift our perspective. While Russia's military and political trajectory are ongoing concerns, the spotlight now moves to China. The country that once appeared unstoppable in its economic rise is now facing a series of roadblocks that threaten its future growth. Understanding how these obstacles developed will reveal the deeper vulnerabilities in China's economy, an economy that, like Russia, is now dealing with significant internal pressures. China's economic dominance, which surged in the early 2000s, may have already peaked. By 2021, it reached its zenith as a global economic force, but now it faces a structural slowdown. Instead of growth, China's financial system is becoming a barrier, limiting the economic progress it once facilitated. The economic pressures stem from an end to the expansive credit and investment growth that defined the past decade, leaving China grappling with a credit crunch. This credit contraction has hit key areas like property investment and infrastructure spending, sectors that were once vital drivers of the nation's growth. Additionally, the official GDP figures have likely been overstated, masking deeper economic issues. The impact of years of inefficient low-return investments is now preventing Beijing from redirecting financial resources toward more productive areas. The result is a lack of adaptability in the economy, where reforms aimed at boosting efficiency and stimulating new dynamic growth sectors have struggled to take off. Yet, China's decline isn't set in stone. The country's leadership could still adjust its objectives, potentially easing tensions both domestically and globally. 
By acknowledging the reality of slower growth, Beijing might ease the economic strain and avoid further friction with international trade partners. The phrase peak China is gaining traction, signaling growing skepticism about China's continued ascent. A significant portion of this debate revolves around China's international influence and its perceived power. Some argue that China's decline is inevitable, while others believe its leadership may still alter course. But at the heart of this discussion is the undeniable fact. China's economic performance has sharply deteriorated over the last three years, particularly with the collapse of its property market and weakening infrastructure investment by local governments. These developments raise profound questions about the sustainability of China's prior growth rates. Domestically, the Chinese public is growing more aware of these issues, despite censorship efforts. Discussions in social media hint at a growing frustration with the country's economic trajectory. Even China's ambitious goal of doubling its GDP by 2035, widely regarded as unrealistic, is being re-examined. If Beijing recognizes that surpassing the U.S. economy is no longer feasible, it could shift towards a more sustainable growth model focused on internal consumption rather than expansion. Such a shift might ease international tensions, but would require China to lower its expectations and ambitions. The key challenge facing China is that its economic slowdown isn't just cyclical, it's structural. Demographic pressures, with a declining population since 2022 and a shrinking workforce since 2013, present significant obstacles. Economies with a falling working age population rarely achieve strong growth. Compounding this issue is the external environment where global businesses are reducing their dependence on China for manufacturing and demand. However, the core of China's economic slowdown lies in its credit and investment-driven growth model, which has hit a dead end. For decades, the country relied on rapid investment growth, particularly in property and infrastructure. These sectors were propped up by steady credit flows, but today, both have dramatically contracted and no new sectors have emerged to take their place. China's financial system, once a catalyst for growth, is now stifling it. The rapid expansion of credit, particularly following the 2008 global financial crisis, fueled the country's economic boom. Between 2008 and 2016, China added $24 trillion in new financial assets, with its banking system now holding $59 trillion in assets, over three times the size of the country's economy. But the financial system's growth was built on government guarantees rather than the financial returns of the investments themselves. Many of the loans were extended to state-owned enterprises, which now rely on continuous rollovers just to stay afloat. As a result, the financial system can no longer sustain the pace of credit and investment growth seen in the past. Banking margins have already narrowed significantly, reflecting a slower credit expansion. The average growth rate of credit has fallen from 18% during the boom years to just 9% in recent times. The impact is clear. Property investments have collapsed, local government projects have slowed, and fiscal pressures on local administrations are mounting. As of mid-2024, the pace of credit growth, measured through several indicators, is approaching record lows. This contraction in credit is deeply tied to the broader economic picture. Gross fixed capital formation, which still makes up 42% of China's GDP, has seen a sharp decline. Without new credit to fuel investment, China's overall long-term growth potential is severely hampered. China's future hinges on its ability to adapt. The financial system's transformation is necessary, but the shift from state-directed lending to more productive sectors will not be easy. With the financial system now acting as a constraint, boosting productivity is crucial. However, productivity growth has stagnated, with most analysts agreeing it will continue to slow. Reforming the financial system to direct credit to innovative sectors rather than legacy industries is critical to achieving sustainable growth. Yet political and institutional barriers remain, hindering any swift redirection. Ultimately, China's leaders are faced with difficult choices. The financial system, once the engine of the country's rapid ascent, now stands in the way of continued growth. How they manage this transition will determine whether the country can stabilize 
and avoid a deeper economic decline. For now, China is learning the hard truth. Its golden era of growth may already be behind it. As China's economic trajectory shifts, the global landscape will undoubtedly feel the ripple effects. Whether through political decisions or financial adjustments, the country's future remains uncertain. What's clear is that the era of rapid growth is fading, and the challenges ahead will require strategic maneuvering. If you found this analysis insightful, don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into global economic trends. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any updates and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned for more.